That's right. So I represented uh, Dell City in Southeast Oklahoma City from 1998 to 2006. Then I left to go serve with the Army in Iraq. And, uh, uh, and then a number of years later, in 2014, I ran for and, and, and won a seat in the legislature again, this time from far northwest Oklahoma City and West Edmond, and served four years. And then you came back now that you're in the county commission and there's, this is a hot topic we're going to talk about. Sure. Uh, and you've done, you've been involved in these sorts of disputes, civil discussions, sometimes not so civil, but in the past, you've been involved in some hot issues before. And so this is this tough on the scale of the sort of issues you've been involved in. Uh, well, the nastiness is there, uh, but in terms of the number of people who are on the other side, it's a, it's not. It, 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 and the the question on the policy is also not uh, as volatile as, say, like when I served in Iraq. You know, there were people who criticized me for uh, serving in Iraq because they did not agree with the Iraq War, and I recognize that there's multiple you know sides on that uh not always an easy question uh some other policy issues in the past where there were you know uh, vigorous uh numbers of people on both sides this one it's a it's a small number of people uh on the one side uh they're just it's very volatile and nasty about it some not not every one of them of course but many of them have been all right, and we're going to take questions. That's what we promised. I, um, and by the way, I want to say right off the bat, my friend Dylan Smith gets the first question this morning. We're going to do. We're going to set the scene here in just a moment because he sent me a, a sweet note. Was basically, a, <laughs> I'm disgusted with Mitchell talks by not holding his feet to the fire. So I had a conversation with Dylan, and by the way, it was very civil. And he disagreed with uh, some of the the way we did our interview the other day. And I said, okay, you'll get the first question. So that's coming up. And thanks, Dylan, for uh, the question. We're going to be doing a lot more of that. We're going to do the civil questions. We're going to do the public policy, some on the controversy, and, and we'll get to those. Let's start with, for the audience that may just be seeing this dispute and uh, the controversy here, let's start by telling people the who, what, when, where, why. Okay, Commissioner, sure. if we could do that. Let's start with what is the Oklahoma County Criminal Justice Authority? Who are they? Where did they come from? And why are they playing such a big role in this? Okay, sure. So the Oklahoma County Criminal Justice Authority, also known as the Jail Trust, uh, was formed a little over a year ago by a, a unanimous vote of the Board of County Commissioners. And the primary purpose of that is to create uh, basically somebody to uh, run and operate the jail and uh, uh, that has only one task, uh, and that is the jail. They don't have also duties and law enforcement or other things that, you know, could cause them to, uh, you know, want to shift money back and forth and things like that, which has been a problem in the past. Uh, and so therefore, uh, you know, that, that jail trust was formed and, uh, then on July 1, uh, the jail trust, uh, you know, formally took over uh, operations. And, uh, and then in terms of, uh, you know, they obviously have a big uh, voice in terms of uh, repairing and things like that at the jail. And uh, the members of the jail trust is really kind of a, you know, very august group of uh, citizens from across the political spectrum and uh, who are very dedicated toward making sure that our jail is run in a way that is more humane for the inmates, is more a better working conditions for our employees, and is a better, uh, more cost-efficient uh, result for the taxpayers. So there are the jail trust, there are some names on there that are pretty well known and are very, very uh, respectable people. And I looked at a few of them, the chairperson, Trisha Everest, former Senator Ben Brown, um, Jim Couch, who's maybe the finest city manager that the nation's ever known, former city manager of Oklahoma City. Um, M.T. Berry, former police chief, former assistant city manager, former Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb. These are all folks that people know and trust for the most part. And you have uh, this trust is going to take this money. Why has this become so controversial? Well, you have a small uh, but uh, noisy and occasionally violent group of people on the other side who are looking for 
uh, money for themselves, uh, quite frankly, in their own pet projects. And uh, they would prefer that money not to be spent on the jail, even though the jail benefits literally all 900,000 or so residents of the county. It's something you have to have. Um, I mean, I, I, like many, would like to see uh, that we don't put nonviolent offenders in the jail or people who are just there for missing court on a traffic ticket. I, I would certainly agree that that, that shouldn't happen. Uh, and it's not within my power as a county commissioner to solve that problem, but I, I certainly agree. But there are people who know fooling are violent and are dangerous and who need to be in jail even before trial because to let them out, uh, they could cause uh, more uh, trauma and, and violence to uh, their victims. So you have to have a jail. Every county in America has a jail. Uh, some of the people opposed to uh, what we're doing with this money actually said tear it down, meaning tear the jail down. Just don't don't even have a jail. Well, that's ridiculous. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, that people need to consider is it probably any county in America, the biggest spreader of COVID in that county is going to be their county jail. That's uh, almost uh, certainly the case in our county. You've got we have 400 or so employees that are you know going home every night who if they're exposed then you know there's a risk of, of exposure for their families and we've had issues with people having to be off on covid lead uh leave because of that and uh then you've got the inmates uh, most of them are going to be out of that jail in fairly short order whether they're convicted and sent on to the state department of corrections or bonded out or you know simply released on their own recognizance uh or uh for whatever reason you know jail is a is a temporary situation so to get control of the uh, jail and make that more COVID resistant is an absolutely urgent uh, reason to use our Federal CARES Act funds on that function rather than on uh, programs that only benefit a small number of people, uh, however loud uh, they they might be in, in opposition. Now, if I recall correctly, you have uh, the treasurer of Oklahoma City, Mr. Freeman, has is dubious about that this will stand scrutiny with the feds at some point and also saturday when i was listening to our conversation again this morning like the word you used where this is the best use of funds for the cares act money you realize uh, that you i'm sure you do by now that there are a lot of people who do not believe it is the best use of funds and i want to get into that special interest stuff but is that is that something that you really believe and that down the road you think will be demonstrated that this is the best use of that 34 36 whatever the number is i'm not really clear on that but that that you stand by this is the best use of the funds well absolutely no one else is going to give us money to, to fund the necessary repairs on the jail necessary to make it covid resistant nobody uh the state's not going to do it the city's not going to do it i mean i've been asked before with maps four would they put in some money for fixing jail was told told no i respect their decision but that means that we have to use the funds available to us to deal with making our jail more covid resistant i uh, just have to on the contrary the the programs that the uh the, the uh, minority want to spend that money on are ones that are already being done by the state in many cases the city and with a whole lot more money than we do the state got you know more than twice as much money as the county did in CARES Act funds. And uh, the state got 25 times as much money as the county did. And so if you're looking for, you know, uh, you know, social programs, handouts, whatever you want to call them, that's where you should be looking is to the people that not only have a whole lot more money to deal with those things, but also have the expertise in doing it. Consider this, uh, you know, Oklahoma County has no expertise in doing whether it's, you know, business bailouts or uh, rental assistance or any of these things we have zero experience in that if you want an object lesson in how not to uh, spend uh, an influx of public dollars look no further than the state unemployment agency if we start getting into a bunch of stuff that we have no expertise in then uh, the chance that uh, some of that money will be spent either uh, fraudulently you know uh, people committing fraud against the the county or that it will be subject to kind of favoritism and crony capitalism uh, is, unfortunately, there's a significant likelihood of that. On the other hand, we already know that making our jail COVID resistant is absolutely in compliance with the CARES Act. Um, and those who are saying otherwise are basically nothing other than people who 
simply want the money spent on their own pet programs. That's all. It's people looking for a handout or, or want to fund their own pet programs rather than uh, do what is absolutely necessary to benefit all the residents of the county, and that is to make sure that our county jail is more COVID resistant because nobody else is going to give us money to handle that problem. We have to do it ourselves. I've got two more questions before I get to the uh, audience questions. And again, Dylan will lead those off. Let me ask you, where did the idea of moving this money to the jail trust come from? Is that from the commissioners or from members of the jail trust? Uh, well, I had that uh, idea from the very beginning. In fact, it was it was actually I'm the one that uh, made the application so that Oklahoma County could get its CARES Act funds separately rather than um, have to go through the state. Uh, so I'm the one that spearheaded that and uh, and then also uh, fought to keep it when there was a issue with the U.S. Treasury where it wasn't clear whether we'd be able to get direct COVID uh, CARES Act funds rather uh, or whether we'd have to go through the state. And from the very get go, my thought was absolutely we need to spend this on the jail. And then Commissioner Mon uh, said uh, at the meeting in which um, I think uh, went at the budget board, we voted to. Uh, approve those funds going to the uh, to the jail trust. Uh, he said in that meeting that that was his intent all along as well as whenever he learned that we were getting uh, CARES Act funds directly. So these other things are kind of you know brand new programs uh, that the county has never done before. So I think you know it wasn't just a few people that had that thought that that would be the best use of those funds. Uh, really, the only logical use of those funds, given the fact that. The county has a duty to run a jail, and nobody else is going to give us money to help make that jail more COVID resistant. I, I would also let's uh, take a, a, um, a statement from Saturday that I've seen plenty of uh, folks saying, "Well, that's just simply not true." Your statement was there has been plenty of public input. Now, I know there's been a yeah. number of meetings. I've seen television reports about this. A lot of folks say there has not been enough public input your comment well no we had uh, over two hours of public comment uh, just a few days before that and then at the jail trust meeting uh, took public comment uh, even the, you know people shoving bullhorns in our faces threatening our families threatening to come to our houses that's the opposition to this deal you know the people who don't uh, who want the money for themselves are bullying uh, you know members of public bodies and and uh, and others uh, to get their way uh, this, this has already been fully vetted at the county budget board, and the uh, majority on the county budget board had voted to approve those monies going to the jail trust. So there was, uh, you know, it wasn't just one uh, decision. There was lots of public input on it beforehand. More so right. than uh, in, uh, gosh, uh, just about any other uh, issue I can recall at the county, and certainly more than issues get at the legislature and. And I think most, if not all, at the city as well. So there was there was lots of public comment. All right, and and there's something I think I probably missed right up at the top. That we're not one and done today because a lot of people have said there's both sides of this issue. Tomorrow we'll spend some time on the other side of the issue. And but today we're going to get to the commissioner on the record on all of these issues because. It is such a, I got to tell you, Commissioner, this may be the hottest issue in town outside of masks. So we'll get to that. Let me, <laughs> let me get to Dylan Smith's question. And during the August 12th Board of Commissions meeting, Calvi asked to defer the vote to allocate one and a half million dollars to the Oklahoma County Home Finance Authority because he said that core county business should be a priority, whereas the rental assistance was brand new ground for the county. Today is the first day protections under the CARES Act ends. The Oklahoma County Court Clerk has 91 eviction cases on its docket. How can a public servant in good conscience defer a decision? Your, your comment. The state's already doing rental assistance, and they have 25 times as much money as we do, and they already have a housing authority that has expertise in this. So whatever the county would add to that is only going to benefit a tiny, tiny fraction of the population, whereas Funding the uh, COVID, uh, uh, COVID-related repairs to our jail benefits every single citizen in the county. Kathy writes, uh, Kathy Cummings writes, Commissioner, I was shocked by you calling your constituents bullies. These bullies, as you call them, are constituents. They're afraid of losing their homes. They can't feed their families. Their utilities are being turned off. They're simply trying to survive. Your comment. When you stick a bullhorn in people's face, 
when you threaten to come to their house, threaten their families. I have seven children. Think about how they feel about being threatened like that. You are no longer engaging in public discourse. You're just being a bully. And I don't back down the bullies ever. Are there, uh, let's just take your terminology for bullies. Are some of them well known in this community? Well, I think some of them are known to law enforcement. In fact, some of the people that bullied us, uh, uh, I understand, were arrested on weapons charges. Uh, so uh, that's that's a concern, obviously. And uh, uh, so uh, I don't know as far as they're well known to the community at large, but I think some of them are well known, unfortunately, to law enforcement. Let me uh, take another question from uh, Lisa. And this, by the way, gets to another area of, of contention, which is the length of the meeting the other day where that the board made their vote. I don't know if that official vote is two to nothing or two to one, but this was a meeting that was done in, I think the media report was 47 seconds, okay? And Lisa says, if that's correct, if not, correct me, but she says, um, um, where, did the, where did this go? Okay, she asked, why didn't you do the prayer and typical morning start before voting the other day? So we'd had requests from our employees, the ones who had bullhorns stuck in their faces and who have been traumatized by these bullies uh, to uh, try to conduct the public business expediently. And so we did. And it was, uh, it was several minutes, but uh, we got through that public business at that time. And, uh, you know, to prevent further trauma to our employees, deputies and uh, clerk employees, et cetera, you know, we conducted public business expediently at that time. And some of those same people who had been the, the bullhorn bullies and the threateners were in the audience at the time. So we did that to protect our employees. Mel, Mel asks, so was it a two to one vote or two to an absolute vote? She says, or he's, I'm sorry, Mel, I'm, because you have said this, you rushed the pledge, et cetera, to have it done in 45 seconds. So that was the question was two to one or two to none. And that I'd have to defer to the clerk. I don't know. Okay. Um, let's uh, get on down to some of these other questions here. Um, I have to scroll this up. Adam asked, what is the complete breakdown of the 36 million that was transferred to the jail trust? I'd like to know the complete breakdown of how the money will be spent that was sent. Sure. So part of it will uh, be, you know, the, I guess, 3 million was for operational funds. That's for bonuses for uh, employees at the jail uh, who are working under very difficult conditions and uh, to make sure that we have adequate staffing during the during COVID. Uh, and then 3 million was for a certain immediate uh, plumbing and air handling uh, repairs that need to be done. And the balance of that is going to be determined by the jail trust. I will tell you that uh, you could easily spend all that and, and much more and not uh, solve every problem uh, there at the jail, but it's a great start. And, uh, you know, as we mentioned before, the members of the jail trust are very august body of people uh, from across the political spectrum. And, uh, you know, I, I think that they will make the right decision on how those funds will be spent. Chris asked, why didn't a portion of that money go to updating the OESA computer systems? Uh, OESC? That's Employment the, Securities Commission. Well, that's a state function. That's not a county function at all. As is, quite frankly, rental assistance and all that is really something much better handled by the state that has the expertise to do it. Uh, all these programs that the, uh, the, the bullies and other naysayers want, it, it really are things that are better handled by the state and possibly the city that have expertise in these matters rather than the county. OSC, the county has nothing to do with it. Uh, Kelly asks, I'd like to know why Commissioner Calvi is interested in assisting the jail trust in fixing the issues of the jail now that the sheriff's office is no longer running the show. The jail was an issue before, but he certainly didn't do anything to help before the trust took over. Well, A, we didn't have CARES Act funds uh, until quite recently, and B, uh, the main reason, or a big reason for the jail trust is to have a uh, somebody running and operating jail that has one task, and that is running the jail, not multiple tasks like law enforcement and things like that. We now have that separation so that funds that are going into fixing the jail are not going to get siphoned off to do other things. Uh, and, and Adam's question about the breakdown of where this goes, you understand why people are very concerned about that that much money going to a, a body 
and even though there are folks there on there that people respect, that's still it, it's hard to, for the for you to answer the question today. Where is that money specifically? Where that money is going to go? You understand how that raises suspicions. The other thing is that particular jail has had, shall we say, a troubled past, and you begin to wonder just how much money would it take to do anything about that building. And I know it's a long controversial issue, but I think you can see where people have great questions about that level of money going into a building that looks like a, a money pit. Well, sure. And there's, you know, there's a kind of a bigger, longer term question. Do you build a new facility or do you uh, simply do adjunct things around the current facility to, uh, you know, which is the best way to go? And, and uh, you know, I don't have all the answers on that. What I do know is that uh, it will take uh, to solve every single problem at the jail. It would take more money than we got from the CARES Act. Uh, but this would be a great head start. Uh, it will definitely be enough to uh, make a huge dent in making the jail more COVID resistant and thereby protecting all of the public. So uh, you're going to need to spend uh, ultimately more than what we even got on uh, if you're going to solve the whole problem. But that doesn't mean that you just sit around and do nothing or waste the money on things that is already being done by other government entities uh, rather than tackling the most urgent problem, the one that will help us slow the spread of COVID the most and the one that only the county has the duty to do, which is to operate a jail and the one that nobody else is going to give us money for. Are you on the jail trust? Yes. OK, it seems to me that uh, the pressure really now is on the jail trust to deliver some information to the public about what they're going to do with that 36 million. That's nine people, correct? Do you understand when this is going to happen? Because it seems that this void is going to be there and people are going to be suspicious until the jail trust makes some moves on an agenda or what they're wanting to do with this money. Well, I uh, got till the end of the year to make uh, uh, decisions. I think uh, s uh, some of those will probably happen very quickly. I think others, there'll be a deliberative process on how to do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, will be determined and, and determined in uh, fairly short order. All right. So in the interest of civil discussions, there's some other questions let's get to that uh, you knew were coming, which is the, on Saturday, you said there was uh, there were uh, violent bullies, spitting, et cetera, threatening you, your family. Clark Fraley says violent. Uh, didn't Commissioner Calvi push a citizen out of a public meeting where a public meeting was taking place? Um, as Stephen asked, please detail exactly what violent acts that those opposing this transfer have committed. Um, Sherry says no one was violent. Your comment. They absolutely were violent and threatened to come to our houses. And uh, that is, uh, you know, you're going to come on my property. Uh, you That is absolutely an act of violence. I would suggest that shoving a bullhorn in somebody's face is assault. Uh, it is no place in public. I held my hand out as a signal that uh, that a closed meeting was going to be occurring. And the person just walked into my hand. So we can see it's obvious oh from the video. It's gosh. ridiculous. All right. And the, the person that was involved in this says that you pushed him. So there's uh, and I was reading the story. George Lang's commentary on Oklahoma City Free Press. Your contention is you did not push him that this gentleman walked into your hand. That's right. Where do you go from here on this particular issue? There are, there are, you said it's a minority, but you, it's a very loud group of folks that are very concerned about this. You've categorized them as bullies and violent bullies, that sort of yes, thing. Yes, they are. Where do we go next? How do, how do we, how does the community come together to try to find some sort of understanding of each other on this issue? Well, I mean, it's a tiny and uh, you know a group of bullies, and you know they're people looking for money for themselves that are in opposition to this. Let's look at what's going to benefit the community as a whole, which is fixing our jail. And uh, so uh, I'm sorry that there's a you know a few people that, that uh, uh, you know think it's appropriate to threaten people to come to their homes, uh, cause fear amongst their children, people uh, uh, doing that sort of behavior because they don't get their way. Uh, so I don't know how you respond to that other than don't give into it. 
and I uh, do not give in to bullies and not going to do it now. Money's already gone. It's already there at the jail trust. So uh, at this point, it would be uh, incumbent upon the jail trust to use those funds in a way that is uh, going to um, be of maximum benefit. K-9 Compton, what are you going to do for the sheriff's office? You still have a grudge against the sheriff because he won't take a, a knee to you and Commissioner Mon? Question mark. Well, uh, I th you know, we'll see what the voters do about uh, you know the, the sheriff's election. But uh, I want to say I greatly appreciate uh, our sheriff's deputies. Uh, I have had my differences with the management of the sheriff's office. Uh, but um, I think that management's going to change. And uh, I greatly appreciate our deputies. And uh, uh, we actually did uh, give a million dollars of our federal CARES Act funds to the sheriff's office. In fact, actually, it was more than that. It was over $1.4 million to the sheriff's office for uh, also hero pay, hazardous duty pay, if you want to call it that, uh, related to COVID and uh, the uh, uh, some additional uh, funding for courthouse security, given all the the violent bullies that have been protesting, not just the commissioners, by the way, they're protesting the district attorney, they're protesting the judges, uh, you know, and uh, so we did actually give them a considerable amount of money, and I do appreciate our deputies very much. Let me kind of follow up on that, because the the uh, jail has, you know, had this spectacularly bad past but it does seem like it's been in the news more since the jail trust. Everybody's seen those pictures of those guys coming out with the the um, the bed sheets and the issues with uh, bed bugs, those sorts of things. I mean, a casual observer would look at the last few months of the or the few months of the jail trust uh, administration and go, "Man, it was much better under the sheriff." Your thoughts about? It would, it's not an auspicious debut for the jail trust right now. Well, first of all, they inherited all those problems. So uh, we've been getting complaints about bed bugs for months, long before the jail trust took over. Uh, the sheriff's office was not taking care of that issue when they had control. The guy that got out had help. I went out and actually looked at the cell and looked at the, uh, uh, the gray that he uh, got out. It was a pretty clean cut across there. It wasn't somebody wrenching off a metal... Uh, grill to be able to get out. So uh, I, you know, we'll see uh, what comes from, from investigation on that. Uh, in some cases, the sheriff's office took people with them, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the jail that knew how to do certain things and didn't bother to train anybody else up in their place, etc. So there were some problems that have been inherited. I mean, you know, the sheriff's office, again, I'm not blaming the deputies. I'm talking about the management. You know, they were supposed to have delivered several vehicles that could be used to transport uh, inmates to the hospital when needed. And they were inoperable vehicles. They even stole the car tags off the uh, uh, off the uh, vehicles. You know, eventually brought them back, uh, you know, later. But they just so a lot of those problems uh, were inherited. And then the second thing, of course, is COVID. I mean, we've had at one point over half the jail staff was off on COVID leave. That's where a lot of this money going to the jail right now, that will help uh, make sure that we do have adequate staffing during this pandemic. So uh, to the extent that there are issues that the, uh, the commissioners can help with or our county budget board, that's what we're doing. That's why we're getting that money to the jail. So we can get uh, many of those problems. Uh, to the extent that there are issues that the, uh, the commissioners can help with or our county budget board, that's what we're doing. That's why we're getting that money to the jail. So we can get uh, many of those problems uh, solved uh, during this pandemic. K-9 Compton asks an interesting question. Are you backing John for Johnson for sheriff and did you and your wife make donations to him? Uh, yes and yes. Okay. Um, there's also a question, that one of the issues you call a pet projects, one person, and I've scrolled past it, but it was basically, isn't isn't this Commissioner Calvi's pet project now? No, this is uh, not something that I benefit from at all. Uh, none of the members of the jail trust benefit at all from being on there. They're all there for the reason of wanting to serve their community. Uh, so uh, this is something that benefits all the public. You have to have a jail. Uh, and so making sure that our jail is more COVID resistant is something that benefits the entire public. 
Um, Dylan has asked, my friend Dylan has asked another question, and it was interesting. We talked a little bit about this Friday when we were taping Hot Seat, but we didn't get to it in the in the four minutes that we had. And it says, uh, Dylan says, and on the matter of not being county expertise, Tulsa County reached out to their housing authority and programs designed to help small businesses. That's your job as county commissioner. And he goes into detail. I guess the top line is, Tulsa, from what I've read, Tulsa had a large list of areas that they put their COVID money as opposed to Oklahoma County. Have you looked at the difference between what Oklahoma County did and what Tulsa has done? Tulsa County got more than twice as much money as Oklahoma County, and it's a smaller county, uh, number one. Number two, uh, Tulsa County, unlike Oklahoma County, is the only county in the state that does not have a dedicated sales tax for uh, its jail or its county operations. Um, I knew that going into this job, I accepted that, but the voters in Oklahoma County have chosen to give that money instead to the cities in the county. Maps, for instance, and all that, which, you know, that I accept that that's the way it is. I knew that going into this job. But because of that, uh, Oklahoma County has to focus on using the funds at its disposal, its resources, on taking care of the county business that has to get done. These other things are already being done by the state, and in some cases by the city as well. People who want these uh, kind of benefit programs or handout programs or social programs, however you want to categorize it, need to look that people have a whole lot more money and expertise than the county does in order to get their funds and let the county take care of the things that nobody else is going to fund and that the county, only the county, has the duty to do and, and expertise at doing. So, you know, it would be like saying, look, you know, uh, what's, a, what's a good cause? COVID research, you know, let's find a cure for COVID. That's a great cause. Should the county give its money to that? No, because other people have more money and expertise to deal with that. Let the county focus on the things that the county has the duty to do and uh, nobody else is going to fund. That's what we need to do with that money. To, to do otherwise is like saying if you get a certain amount of money at your home, uh, you know, that you uh, go to look to build a new addition onto your home, Rather than fix the, uh, you know, the collapsed sewer line and the uh, leaky plumbing and the electrical problems. No, you take care of the necessary things first before you go looking at, you know, creating new programs and new things to do. Especially when other people are already doing those programs, like the state and the city. And Jeremy asks, and we've semi-covered this, but it, it's uh, something we can revisit because it's something people are talking about. Is it legal to use federal COVID relief funds to shore up a budgetary issue with the jail? Uh, yes, it, it is. Uh, you, uh, It is presumed to be compliant with COVID. And this is from an email from the U.S. Treasury to uh, Senator Langford's office, as well as, I assume, other other. Uh, uh, senators and such around the country, but it's uh, deemed a com COVID compliant thing to uh, pay yourself back for uh, public health and public safety personnel budgets. And, and the amount of money uh, at issue here is well within those bounds. So yes, it's 100% COVID compliant. What's maybe not COVID compliant is doing things like rental assistance if somebody defrauds the, the county and actually gets money that wasn't deserving of it. That's where the bigger risk is at uh, getting audited and uh, perhaps having to, to pay that money back. Hannah asks, Commissioner, why do you continue to tell the public that it's the city or state's job to govern? Let me start over this. This is a really small type I'm looking at, and I'm, I apologize for that. Why do you continue to tell the public that it's the city or state's job to govern new untested programs to distribute this money. No one had a CARES distribution plan until COVID hit. It's all new. It's all unprecedented. As a public servant, it's literally your job to govern and figure out figure out an equitable way to distribute these funds. Your comment. Well, the most equitable way to distribute these funds is to take care of bedrock core functions of government like a jail that benefit the entire public rather than doling out some of this money to a tiny minority of people however loud and and you know bullying they might be uh to for these funds that's the most equitable way by far and then as far as uh you know programs look the state and the city already have housing authorities they already have business development uh things that the county doesn't have and never has had so uh, for the county to start a new program, new to it for sure, uh, is under fire, 
is not the wisest way to go about it. And again, the, the, the object lesson is the state unemployment agency and how they, uh, you know, had challenges when they got a huge influx of money and a huge new influx of unemployment claims, you know, tens of millions of dollars have been lost to fraudsters. Um, and that's the risk that if we were trying to set up a new program, new to the county at least, uh, under fire with a large influx of funds, that's the risk there. So by far the most equitable, uh, the most necessary and the wisest use of our CARES Act funds is to take care of the necessary public business that the county and only the county has the duty to do, and that is our county jail. Sarah says, just keep in mind that actions will definitely dictate who is elected by the people, which leads me to ask you this question. You've already drawn an opponent for a race that's two years down the road. This is a, sure. as with many issues dealing with COVID, controversial. Holy Moses. I mean, just if any issue you bring up right now dealing with COVID, there's a fist fight, at least on social media. And you know that. And it's a, and people are seeing what's happening. We have a presidential election in what, less than 90 to 60 days or so. Mm -hmm. Also, there was the issue with what happened in terms of public input. Both sides, you have a different, different viewpoint than what some of the folks who are protesting this are concerned. How can we bring people a little bit more together? And, and by the way, how can the county, from a facility standpoint that I've seen, make it where that voices can be heard in a much more civil way? It did not appear to be real civil and that people were having understanding in terms of the exchanges. You know, even when we, uh, uh, you know, we do have public input, and when we uh, opened up for public input on this, they saw people shouting the F-bomb and... Uh, you know, like I said, issuing threats, you know, uh, bullhorns and things of that nature. Uh, when you've got people who are being bullies, the only thing to do is just not give in to them. Because if you give in to them, then they'll keep coming back to do that. So you just have to take a hard line on that and just say, no, we're not going to give in to the bullying. We're going to do what is in the best interest of the public, not in the best interest of the bullies. Would you describe bully, your definition of bully? Sure. If you are attempting by threat, uh, by intimidation, by disruption to influence public policy <clears throat> rather than, I mean, people who email me about it and stuff like that, you know, and say, hey, what's the deal and all that, uh, you know, uh, I think because of all the issues were in a slight delay in, in replying, but we absolutely will. And we'll explain what I have here today, why the, this is the best use of those public funds. Uh, completely appropriate. But, uh, you know, for those who come in to disrupt, uh, that is uh, not appropriate, and uh, I don't give in to bullies. There's an effort to recall you. Have you looked to, into that particular situation? That's free country. Stephen asks, so if we have so much time, why not move slowly and wait to see what the needs of the county are as a whole instead of throwing money at the trust? Well, very simply, because we need to make sure that the trust knows what kind of funds are available so that they can start to uh, deliberate and make those decisions. If they try to do it in a vacuum, then they're just kind of spinning their wheels. Jonathan says, in, in response to the, the bully thing, and this is a, a nice comment, says to you, hey, he calls you Representative Calvi. A lot of people probably still do. Commissioner Calvi, thanks for jumping on Facebook Live. And I would say that. Thank you. I mean, this is a lot of people will not face the the public on these issues, but thanks for doing this. Regardless of policy, your continued use of the word bully, in quotes, to describe those who disagree with this uh, with is problematic. It's a cheap way to discredit anyone who thinks you handled this poorly. Your thoughts? Well, um, you just look at the videos of the meeting and you'll see uh, what I'm talking about by the bullies. I think everybody saw it on TV, or many people did. And, uh, you know, I would urge those who have a uh, a view and want to know the truth about this, please distinguish yourself from the bullies by joining me in condemning that sort of bullying. Um, uh, when you, uh, I, I would just ask that you do so, uh, because, uh, let's, let's, let's all condemn that sort of bullying action. And then to the extent that we need to talk through, uh, you know, issues as far as how funds are spent and all that, that's then that civil discourse, which I greatly welcome. I think it actually is very helpful. I appreciate it. 
And uh, I appreciate, you know, we've received a number of emails that have been you know, asked very honest questions, and I'm very happy to receive those and to have that kind of dialogue. But when you try, when you open it up for public comment and then people are shouting the F-bomb at you, uh, it uh, makes it much more, and, and even worse, you know, threatening to come to your house, you know, threatening your family, then that's, uh, that's when it becomes no longer civil discourse on their part. Uh, there is a at the top of the responses and by the way thank i want to thank people for writing these questions you're going to say man you're not getting to all of these mitchell We're absolutely trying to do my best on this a lot of people are i'm scrolling through right now trying to make sure that we get to questions people haven't asked or they haven't gotten to ask uh, other questions but um Here's one, nonviolent offenders sitting in the county jail who can't afford bail, they need to be released on their own recognizance. They're in danger of getting COVID and possibly death. Your thoughts? I agree. I, I, I have long for several years now, both when I was in the legislature, uh, I, I actually uh, tried to get a bill passed that would have uh, forbidden warrants for people's arrest for simply failure to appear in court on traffic tickets. And uh, the bill died on a tie vote in committee, most of the Republicans voted for it, but all the Democrats voted no, because one of the Democrats on that committee is a lawyer who represents municipalities, and it's a cash cow for them. So uh, that, with that statement, I absolutely agree. I don't want nonviolent people in our jail. I don't want people, I don't want jail to be used as a method of debt collection. That's wrong. It's wrong, and it's also not fiscally conservative. I'm a conservative Republican. It is not fiscally conservative to put people in jail for missing court on a traffic ticket or a missing court on a cost hearing. Uh, that's simply not smart government. And that's if it was up to me, absolutely. I mean, I will push it to the extent I'm able to, but uh, that is something that is in the hands of the courts and uh, to some extent of law enforcement. And so I, uh, my ability to limit, to influence that is limited, but I absolutely agree that nonviolent offenders should not be in jail. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, let's work together on making sure that we reduce that population. Wholeheartedly agree. Here's an inter interesting question from Adam. But before I get to that, are you okay on time? I, I, we said about a half an hour, and we're running way over that. Yeah, we are. Uh, I, 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 you got I five more minutes, time, but uh, if we can, yeah, I'll, I'll have five to take more minutes. Question. And by the way, I would also say there are a number or there are a lot of questions on this Facebook. You can go back and take a look. Those, I would urge you to go back, take a look at the questions that uh, we can't get to this morning. But um, again, thank you for that. And sure. we'll have an announcement after this is over with. But let me get to Adam's question, which is, would you consider removing yourself as a trustee and appointing another commissioner to show this is not a pet project? No, it's not a pet project. Um, <clears throat> the... Uh, uh, you know, I've developed some expertise in knowing about some of the issues in the jail. And, uh, you know, a pet project to me sounds like something that somebody is personally benefiting from. I don't benefit at all from being on the jail trust uh, one iota. Uh, in fact, it takes up my time, uh, but uh, it is necessary to go there. Plus, that would be giving into bullying, and I'm just not going to do that. What's next? People are going to want to know what is next as the sun comes into this room. Huh? Sure. Well, uh, next is the jail trust will uh, will have uh, the you know the input on how they should spend that money to make the jail more COVID resistant, and uh, and then we go from there. I want to take the time to thank our commissioner uh, for coming on and. Uh, this is one of those issues that's going to stay with you for a long time. You understand that you've got an opponent. There's a recall uh, situation and you're having a, you're facing the heat on this. And that's something we'll be talking about tomorrow. But any final, me do you have a mess message to the people who are opposing you on this particular issue? I don't give in to bullies. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, so if you think that's going to be effective, you're mistaken. And, uh, you know, the same people trying to bully the district attorney and other people. Uh, you know, I, uh, there are some people that maybe that would work with. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are others of us who are going to do the public's business, not the business of the bullies. That's my message. Now, there has been some discussion about officials spending a night in the jail to kind of get an idea of how this on uh, how this goes. Trisha Everest said she would do that. Are you going to do that? Yeah, I already said I would, and I'd be happy to, because, you know, part of the reason why we're doing what we do <clears throat> is certainly want better working conditions for our employees. 
uh, and we want a more cost efficient use of the taxpayer dollars for the taxpayers. But part of it is better treatment for the inmates. I think that's important. Uh, you know, when somebody is in our county jail, 87% of the people in our county jail are there pre-trial, meaning they have not been yet convicted. Well, I was taught at Georgetown Law School that you're innocent until proven guilty. I assume they taught me correctly on that. And does that means that those people are at least right now legally innocent. If you're going to put somebody in jail because they're legally innocent, there's two things. Number one, you better make darn sure that it's a, a compelling reason. And that compelling reason has to be that they are a violent person who would cause uh, damage to others if they were uh, let out, even pre-trial. Okay, that's what jails do. The second thing is you have a duty to treat those people decently, no matter what they've done. And so, uh, yes, I, I, I would be certainly willing. I've been in the jail many, 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 many times, uh, visited with inmates, etc. Uh, we uh, frequently uh, have uh, received, say, a complaint from a relative of an inmate, and uh, either my staff or I will go in and track that down and uh, see what the situation is and, and see what we can do uh, to assist. And so, yes, I've already agreed to do that and would be happy to do that. I think that uh, that's, uh, that would be a good experience. All right, Commissioner Kevin Covey, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, Scott. Hope you'll come back again soon. Sure, you bet. Thanks. All right, thank you. you bet. And that's County Commissioner Kevin Covey, who's with us this morning. There's a lot of questions still this morning. I want to scroll up to John Fisher, my friend John Fisher's statement. He said this, I don't think the F word should be used in civil public discourse. I also think skipping processes, agenda items, and ramrodding a vote through quickly has no place. And to that point, let me just say that we're going to be taking the other side. I don't have a, a complete agenda for you just yet, but uh, Commissioner Cowie appeared today and tomorrow morning. We're going to have folks who disagree, and we'll be talking to you about that. Yep. My suggestion is, if you like this page, go get your notifications. Make sure the notifications are turned on so that you can be aware when we go live. I would hope it would be around 9 o'clock, but we'll be working that out a little bit later today. Also, this will the, there will be a second Facebook Live. We normally do a 7 o'clock Dr. Power panel on Monday nights. We are going to do that. We're, we've got a lot of news in that one. That will be 7 o'clock tonight on Mitchell Talks. In the meantime, I hope you have a great Monday and thanks for tuning in. You can follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks and we'll see you down the road on this issue and many more. Thanks for tuning in.